Hey everyone, Tim with Collect Jurassic here with a news update and it's been kind of a while since we've had one here on the channel but we're back with a bang. We're talking about Jurassic World Dominion toys. Pretty much everything that's been revealed so far will be going over today including some really new exciting reveals that happened just today around extreme damage for Mattel's uh, 2022 Dominion toy line. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in and start looking at some of these incredible figures uh, and I'll give you my impressions as we go. So the first one up is a big one and that is Brachiosaurus. Uh, the Brachiosaurus is back. As you know, Mattel has already released the Brachiosaurus way back in 2019 as part of the Legacy Collection. Super popular figure and now it's coming back with a new paint deco um, and more paint applications overall as well as some other features that are unique to this year with Jurassic World Dominion. So again, Brachiosaurus has always been a favorite, but this new version has some pretty cool paint. You can see here on the detail shot of the head, it's got some flecks of teal up there. Almost looks metallic too, but still has that nice base gray that makes it a... Uh, a uh, you know Jurassic Brachiosaurus, but I really like the light colored bottom jaw and sort of how that paint extends down into the neck. And you also have some darker colors uh, on the back part of the uh, body overall. But you can see on this full body shot how that light color stays at the neck kind of comes down into the body um, and it makes it just it looks close enough to the legacy collection brachiosaurus we already have but sort of a uh, couple new layers of paint that that one didn't have very much paint layers on it actually so the fact that they're even adding any here is sort of in addition to what we already got but what i think uh, kind of the impression i get of this is this brachiosaur is really supposed to be similar to the jurassic world version of uh jurassic's brachiosaurus uh which did have a little bit of teal in it but still looked pretty faithful to the original uh isla nublar jurassic park one brachiosaurus but nothing else uh paint wise is too radical with this and of course you can see in this shot has the same articulation with the tail, the neck, the jaw, the legs, and all that. But what's probably the most unique thing about this, aside from the paint, is the DNA. Uh, I'm not calling I guess it's a scan code. It's a DNA chip that you pull out of the back of the dinosaur. And we'll see this over and over again in this video, this new feature for the Jurassic World line where you're able to actually pull this DNA tab, tab out versus having it on the foot. And you can see here the Brachiosaurus has it right there on the back of its spine. So cool little feature with these new toys and again we'll see that um in this next toy as well which is the uh cosmo ceratops a new legacy collection figure so legacy collection is coming back in 2022 for dominion um but the first thing you're probably wondering is legacy collection is usually the old movies um why is there a Cosmo Ceratops? I don't remember that one. And, and you're right, there is no Cosmo Ceratops uh, in any of the Jurassic films, at least in the flesh. I believe there's a skeleton in the Fallen Kingdom scene at Lockwood, but otherwise, this dinosaur is not in the films. But it's a cool little design. I actually really like the sculpt, especially the frill and the horns. Um, the paint leaves a little bit to be desired. Here you can see the action features just... Um, connected to the tail and head head butting but yeah that paint again a little to be desired you can see the frill has paint on the horns but the actual horns of the dinosaur remain unpainted the eye has a sort of a color on it but there's just not it doesn't really pop and you're used to these dinosaur figures having um, face paint that really pops and almost looks like they forgot to paint the rest of this one uh, including the beak and the tail also not painted so um, I'm not a big big uh, you know knocker of Mattel for not painting certain things I understand the limitations but on this figure it's pretty blatant how much paint is missing and is that paint missing because they had to add in that dna chip feature i don't know i mean certainly that cost additional money to produce um not just a sticker on the bottom of the figure but now an actual contraption on the back which you can see here so this one definitely is me a little bit disappointed with the lack of paint now moving on to Velociraptor, uh, this one I guess is supposed to be a Jurassic Park Velociraptor or maybe a Lost World Velociraptor, but again I can't help but say I'm a little disappointed with this one um, with the paint and also uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of this sculpt either. If you watch my channel, I do a review on this very same Velociraptor sculpt. It's very rotund, <laughs> has a very wide body, and the action feature uh, is probably because um, the action feature actually needs that room to house its mechanism, which makes the dinosaur kind of thrash back and forth. And I don't know, there's something about it. It just makes this raptor look a little bit 
fatter and wider in the middle than it needs to be. But um, I, I mean, again, coming out back to the paint job here, uh, it's just there's just not a lot going on with these legacy collection figures, and this Raptor is included. You can see the tails totally unpainted, claws are all unpainted. It just looks like a much cheaper figure for something that I imagine is going to be running us anywhere from ten to twelve dollars at least. So, I mean, the, there's some nice details with the head and the, uh, the, the wrists are kind of anatomically better uh, suited for Velociraptor than what we've seen in other figures. But overall, just pretty disappointed with this one, especially considering it's supposed to be this Jurassic Park Velociraptor. I would have liked for them to do something a little bit more like what came with the uh, Comic-Con Ray Arnold in, in terms of paint. But that's not what we're getting here. And we're also getting that DNA tag here. So again, leads me, leads me to sort of theorize that maybe in some cases adding this DNA chip really affected the paint budget of these figures. Hard to say. Um, rounding out the Legacy Collection, last figure we'll look at is Pachycephalosaurus. And this one's probably the least ugly of the three. Um, and it's supposed to be obviously a Legacy Collection, so Lost World uh, Pachycephalosaurus. Which is funny because uh, when Legacy Collection first came out, we actually already got a pretty faithful Lost World Pachycephalosaurus, but now we're getting this new one that you can see here on the screen, and it still looks somewhat similar to the Lost World movie version, but um, not enough that I think they needed to make uh, yet another one. Um, it's a little bit more vibrant and saturated in this latest figure, but same action feature with the uh, tail um, being manipulated and causing the head to butt back and forth. I think a lot of collectors aren't big fans of this packy sculpt in the first place. It's got kind of weird legs and stuff. So I'd love to see them completely revisit this figure, but not sure that's in the cards um, with Dominion right around the corner. And this is the packy that we actually have that's coming out as part of the Legacy Collection. So, But if you missed that first wave of Legacy Collection way back in 2018, you can finally uh, grab another one that has somewhat of a paint application uh, reminiscent of the Lost World Packy. I'm anxious to get this one in my hands, though, and kind of do a side-by-side. -side. Maybe they, you know, match each other really, really well, which would be, um, you know, that'd be kind of fun. But, uh, but yeah, other than that, uh, the DNA tag, of course, is another unique feature for this version of the Packy that none of the other Packies have. That little tab you can pull out and scan with your phone and scan the dinosaur into your app. And I think there's some sort of augmented reality thing this time around, which is pretty cool. But another figure that I'm way more excited about is this Extreme Damage Velociraptor. I mean, this thing is gorgeous, has a gorgeous paint application. Also, can we talk about this box here uh, with the like fiery red sky background? A little bit different than the other Dominion artwork we've seen. Just a really, really cool figure, really cool raptor, and I think it's a new sculpt too. I can't be 100% sure, but it does look like uh, all new sculpt, and of course it's got that nifty extreme damage, um, which uh, is, is a little bit different than what we saw with uh, battle damage um, back when Mattel was doing that. This is actually a mechanism that twists a piece inside of them that shows either their skin color, like you can see here, that white, or red for uh, damage. but. Uh, better detail shot of the Velociraptor overall here. And you can see uh, toenails are painted, tail is painted, huge, huge improvement with the tail paint. These figures look so bad when their tail's not painted, it kind of ends abruptly, but um, I'm really glad they did it here. I mean, this is just a beautiful Raptor. It doesn't even look like blue either. A lot of these Raptors always look like blue with a new paint job, but this looks like kind of its own thing. And um, it's just a really, really nice new Velociraptor sculpt um, from the neck down at least the head still might be blue but um the whole package comes together and here's you can see uh that battle damage um the alternative state where you actually see the red this is like the extreme damage t-rex and extreme damage indominus rex that came out in 2021 same idea but on a much smaller figure which is kind of fun um that they managed to fit the same idea into such a small figure um Really, really cool and no pieces to lose or anything like that. So a fun action feature for kids. And of course, like all the other figures, we have that scan code here. And I talked a little bit about it with the Pachycephalosaurus, but I think the idea here is you scan these raptors, um, or scan these toys rather, into the app and you get sort of like a little augmented reality um, virtual model of the Velociraptor, not unlike an NFT. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, uh, you get your own little digital version of the raptor to play with. 
Uh, moving on to the next extreme damage figure in this smaller assortment, we have Colaris. Hope I'm saying that right. Um, Colaris is technically a repaint, but this figure is net new enough that I wouldn't even call this a repaint. Colaris has come out twice in the Mattel line as an attack pack or wild pack figure at $8. This figure looks a little bit bigger at, and it'll be 10 to $12. And it has that extreme damage feature. And it looks like they kind of retooled the entire thing. I mean, the, the from the legs back, the way the hips kind of arch up and then the tail kind of goes off of that arch, that looks totally different than the other base figure that we already have. And, um, you know, overall, I just feel like there's more detail here because it's a little bit more of a deluxe figure, but really simple, effective paint job. I know a few people aren't, a few people aren't a big fan of this one, but I kind of like this dark paint job. It looks very naturalistic. I can see a pack of these things kind of sulking around in the forest. So totally works for me personally. Um, and I like the, uh, the way the eye pops as well, um, on that head. I would like to see a little bit of and maybe a more saturated color on those back kind of feathers or spines on the back of its head. I think that would be kind of a, a fun little feature, but beautiful version of Colaris all the same. Here you can see that uh, extreme damage in action. You can really see how clear the button is, and right next to it is that DNA tag that we'll talk about in a second. But yeah, press that button down and watch the gore come, which um, I think all kids, <laughs> I know when I was a kid collecting Jurassic, I always was fascinated by the gore, but um, annoyed with losing pieces. So this is the ingenious solution Mattel has come up with over the years for battle damage. No missing pieces. Then we have that DNA tag as well. Um, on all these figures, it's, it's usually situated in the back of the figure on the hips. And they do a decent job disguising it. I'm guessing there's a, some grooves there so that you can pinch it with your nails and pull it out. Um, but overall, they did a pretty good job hiding it. I don't know why they had to take it off the foot and affect the sculpt, but I'm sure they have their reasons for playability. So uh, moving on, we have the Extreme Damage T-Rex. Not going to spend quite as much time on this one because it technically isn't that new of a figure. It's totally just a repaint, but it does give us some insight into maybe how the other T-Rexes for Jurassic World Dominion will be painted with this much darker color um, overall than what we've usually had. I love this glamour shot of it, though. It looks really cool, um, especially the eyes, that dark paint around the eyes really, really uh, aligns with the Jurassic Park T-Rex design that we're hoping to see resurrected in Dominion. Um, and another thing you can kind of notice on some of these photos is this plastic marbling. You can see it on the leg there. We'll get a little closer uh, with the uh, extreme damage feature here. You can see towards the back those black veins. It's almost like a marbled plastic effect that I do not think we've had on Mattel figures today. We've had little flecks of plastic in there to give them texture, but this large-scale marbling is definitely something different and probably just an attempt at them to make the... Uh, you know, the skin of the animal look that much more realistic. Um, and that works. Uh, I think I, I'm hoping seeing it in the flesh, it's maybe a little bit more subtle, but worth pointing out in this figure that is otherwise pretty much identical to the 2021 Extreme Damage T-Rex we have. You can see on the other side here, um, it has ex extreme damage on both sides of the figure. Um, and of course, it has that DNA tag. So that would be another net new piece of this figure that wasn't on the other one. It was the DNA tag, again, on the hip. But otherwise, this figure um, was probably always meant to come out for Dominion, and they just still came out with a version last year uh, just to kind of bridge the gap. But let's get back to an all-new figure. And that would be this Roarin' Allosaurus, Extreme Damage Roarin' Allosaurus. Uh, probably one of the figures I'm most excited about in this video today. I mean, this thing is huge. This is not the same size as the Allosaur we've already gotten. Uh, you'll see in a couple pictures here that it's actually 20 inches long, which I think makes it almost double the si double the length, or give or take, of the uh, Allosauruses we've already have. Uh, and it just the paint application is a little less saturated, which I think really works in this case. Um, obviously, it's supposed to be sort of a battle at Big Rock version of Allosaurus with that darker almost bluish tone on the top and a tanner color on the bottom uh and it I, this has got to be like the superior version of it i mean i know we already got a couple different battle of big rock allosaurs but something about this one is really working for me you can see that veining in this picture too just like the t-rex in the slide before this um but the, ex the extreme damage of this figure is 
real deluxe. Uh, we haven't seen this since Albertosaurus with uh, the pieces of bone and like the squishy organ underneath, sort of like a two-stage extreme damage, if you will, where you flip the one trapdoor down and you see the bones, then you flip the bones down and you see the organs inside. Um, always appreciated that fun extra damage on the uh, Albertosaurus. So now it's coming to this huge Allosaurus. Allosaurus also has action features. There's a button you press and it roars. And it also um, doesn't just roar with its mouth. It actually has a sound too, which makes this a very deluxe figure. So um, the main takeaway here is that this not only has premium extreme damage with those bones and those uh, organs, but it also has electronic sound features, and it's also bigger than the regular Allosaurus. It's larger, so it'll be the biggest Allosaurus in the collection to date, which is really, really exciting. Of course, we have that DNA tag, too. Can't help but notice on this figure, it's on the neck, though, not on that um, that hip over the leg position that it is on most of the toys. It's actually on the neck here, which is probably due to... Um, you know, that, that extreme damage feature that it has. No neck articulation uh, because of it. Um, and now we're going to head over to non-core items, but still really exciting, and that's the premium, uh, sorry, premium Hammond collection. I want to say Amber collection. Uh, sorry, no joke there intended. Uh, Hammond collection, of course, replacing Amber collection's six inch line with a premium three and three and three quarter line that'll match with the core figures. So that means if you have, uh, you know, a bunch of regular Mattel figures, these figures will be the same size right next to them. It won't be like Amber collection where they're a step bigger. But similar to Amber Collection, they have tons of articulation and really, really detailed paint applications. You can see in these glamour shots of Parasaurial Office, um, you know, flecking down by the abdomen, um, different uh, shades of airbrush with the stripes, just tons and tons of paint detail um, and tons of articulation too with the wrist, shoulders, uh, knees, ankles, back of neck, mouth, tail, bendy tail. I mean, they, these figures literally have everything you could want um, in a Mattel figure uh, all in one all in one place. And they're actually pretty cheap too. I believe they retail for uh, $20 uh, USD, which is really, really, really reasonable considering the size of this figure, the paint detail, and of course that articulation too. Um, so that's the Parasaurial Office. We also have Baryonyx um, revealed as part of this assortment. Um, all these figures were revealed on Behind the Gates, which is that uh, exclusive Target program with Jurassic Outposts where they reveal figures. These were the first two reveals and they were stunners for this year. Um, this is Baryonyx, obviously, similar to the Parasaurial Office. Lots of articulation here. Lots of premium paint applications. This Baryonyx literally looks like it jumped off the screen as far as paint deco goes. Probably the closest paint deco we've gotten to an on-screen Baryonyx from Fallen Kingdom. And the articulation looks like it offers you a lot of options. I love this bent down roaring pose that it has. But you can see that the neck has multiple points of articulation and, of course, the uh, arms and legs have that knee and ankle shoulder wrist that we got really excited about with Amber Collection finally coming to Hammond Collection in this smaller scale. So here's a side profile of Baryonyx. Again, um, just very, very uh, screen accurate in terms of paint deco and overall um, detail. So amazing figures and there's actually more Hammond Collection on the way, at least one Velociraptor and Ian Malcolm, but something tells me there's going to be a lot more than that. So very exciting stuff with this premium series from Mattel, new for this year, Hammond Collection. And that's pretty much everything that's been officially revealed so far for Jurassic World Dominion. Of course, there is boatloads to come. I mean, this is barely scratching the surface. Of course, if you wanna know what else is coming, you can always head to collectjurassic.com. We have our checklist already built up there. Of course, we're still filling in a lot of photos as they come in, but you can get an idea of just how much is on the way. But I think that's all I have to talk about for today. Again, I'm Tim with Collect Jurassic. Thanks for watching this news update, and of course, I'll see you next time.